Yes, the recording just started. Once again, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the session on BC315 Life Skills. So even before we could start with our session, let's start the session with a word of prayer. Yeah. Dear God, we thank you, we praise you, we love you and we honor you. Father, we submit and surrender ourselves in your hand. Thank you that you are in complete control, O oh Father. Despite our situation, our circumstances, Lord, you are faithful and you are in midst of us. Lord, we surrender our classes into your hand, each and every student in your hand, O oh Father. Thank you for this wonderful time that you bless us week after week, where you can just sit and study. And I pray that every skill that we learn in this class, Lord, will help us develop that and develop that skill in each of us, Lord, where we can serve you with excellence, Father. Thank you, Lord, for the greater things that you are doing in and through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so what did we cover last week? I mean, not last week, last week we didn't have a class, but last before week, what did we cover? Anyone? We covered on personal goal settings. Okay. We also covered on personal planning and development. And under personal planning and personal goal settings, we covered on how important was a personal plan to be developed and uh, how important it is uh, to have a vision, to have a goal setting, and how we need to work towards developing a strategy and working towards it. We also uh, covered on, um, when it came to life goals, we covered on um, SMART, how we need to plan our goals smartly. And we also specified the full form of SMART was specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timed goals and how important it is to review our life goals time and again either we can expand it change it and enhance it so that you know we are effective in our personal development or personal planning well with that this week we will move on to interpersonal communication skill now we all know how important is communication So can I ask, what is communication? Why do you think communication is important in our daily life? It can be in our ministry. It can be in our professional workplace. Why do you think communication is an important role for us? Anyone in the class? I think communication is important to make us relay and receive information from our recipients. Communication is important to make a relay and an important recipient from us. Uh, from uh, receiving more inf information from my important recipients. Recipients. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Why do you think communication is important? Communication helps us to know each other, know the thoughts, know uh, how we can align ourselves and, uh, uh, you know, work in a team. Uh, so it, Communication in every aspect of life is important, be it anything, but communication makes things better, easier, and uh, also uh, lead us uh, in uh, unity and uniformity. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Avni. Yes, the strong interpersonal 
communication is very important. As they said, it helps us in interaction. And there is an exchange of information that happens between two or more people. So this can be verbal or nonverbal communication. So when we look at first the verbal communication, Verbal communication is very important because we see the importance of words. The words are very important. It involves both uh, sending and receiving the information. So it requires when both people speak. When one is speaking, the other person is listening. So it also helps, it is very important when we say a verbal communication is important by speaking. The other, nonverbal, just by listening is also equally important. <coughs> yeah, so in effective communication, it's a communication that, that where both of them, both the parties are effectively involved in speaking and also at the same time the other person is listening and trying to understand what the other person is saying. So the communication is a very simplest form of, it's an act of transferring the information from one person to the other or one place to another. So it may be vocal or written. These days it can be through digital or the media, such it, it, it involves the books or magazines or website, emails. It can be different ways. Also through visual, like, you know, uh, um, visual involves the media or the non-verbal communication, like using our body language, the gesture, the tone, and the very pitch of a voice so in practice it is often a combination of several of these things so communication yes it is a skill and it takes a lifetime for a person to master it indeed there are some people who are good at it who have mastered them and for some of us yes it is a process where we can learn and apply it in a daily life so the most important of good communication skill is we need to develop a communication. Why? It can help us to interact well, communicate well. It, it can be in a ministry or it can be at a workplace, despite the place where we are serving or working at. Communication is very important. It, it is a very vital role. It plays a very vital part in a in a workplace or in a ministry where one communicates their idea the vision the goals clearly to others it can be in a social gathering or in a personal setup but communication is very vital so communication skills are needed in almost all aspects of our life it can be professional in place when we are applying for a job or looking for a promotion with your current employer. So you will almost need to demonstrate a good and clear communication. So when we speak appropriately to the need and communicate the idea or the requirement, you see there's a clear communication that takes place. And also, as we communicate, the nonverbal communication is also very important, which involves our body language, our eye contact. And it also demonstrates several areas. We are able to understand our employee with, with their body language, like are they accepting of what I'm trying to say, what I'm putting it for. So it is very important. Communication is a two-way process. What happens? Okay, it involves verbal and non-verbal. So communication is a skill that can be learned during the process and can be developed with us. So how do we develop communication? A good communication skills can improve the way that we operate in our life. 
it can easy a relationship with others at the same time if we are poor in communication this poor communication skill can make a relationship hard and it can be personal or it can be at a workplace or it can be at a ministry or business because we are unable to deliver the message the vision clearly so it is very important for us to develop a good communication skill how this can be developed there is a prayer process that happens you need to literally write down put into jot the points what you want to say and how you are going to say it so this will also help us to improve our communication and keep it clear the way we communicate so there are different sections on a communication skill what is it we see the first one as interpersonal communication so interpersonal communication is a skill and we can use when we engage from face to face communication either it can be with one or more than one people so it this improves the communication how uh, from addressing certain issues it could be uh, personal or interpersonal we can interact with people from one culture to the other on a regular basis so when when we have one or <coughs> interpersonal communication skills are divided into three verbal communication non verbal communication and listening so when it comes to verbal communication it's all about the words how we put across the message how uh, verbal how we put across the message clearly to another person well verbal communication can also be both ways written and spoken so when we say uh, written or spoken it involves the words it involves the words the words that we choose can make a big difference whether the other person understands us for example when we look at a interview setting we see how an employee and employer communicate so we understand by their body posture the words that they use the uh, the the body language that they have we can make out it is a uh, it is a professional communication and the the body language what is uh, how firmly they sit the words that they communicate uh, the eye contact the body language with that we can know that this is a professional conversation that is happening sounds like an interview and the whole overall we we can judge by just saying we judge okay it is a professional communication on the other end when we see a uh, when we when we see a mother and a child you know that communication is very simple and very close net you see most of the communication between a mother and the child need not be just a verbal but you see even non verbal language being involved in the same way when you look at two people or uh, two people who are in a relationship when they sit together and talk to each other with their body language with the words that they communicate you see very few words have been used between them most it is like non verbal from the way they hold hand to hand or look at each other eye to eye and you see the way they smile at each other you know it is more than a professional communication it is a personal it is a relationship that they have and you know the overall set when you look at you know this is a different type of communication or there is a personal relationship involved in it so how a person is able to relate to all these three by the words that they use by the body language by the action that is involved we are able to judge the relationship that they have professional personal and you know yeah 
between the child and the mother a personal communication we can make that out make it out i'm just going slow just give me a minute okay so yeah when it comes to non verbal communication let's talk about non verbal communication and why do you think non verbal communication is important and what are the key facts that we need to watch in a non verbal communication so we see that um, just as how communication is important even non verbal communication is very important it's equally important because it refers to a gesture the facial expression the tone of our voice the eye contact um the body language the push that the person is involved in in the meeting or whatever posture the other person is in so the ways that people can communicate without using a body language so when we are interviewing a person as just we discussed we know it is a job interview the how the words and the non verbal communication that is involved in so why do you think it is important why do you think non verbal communication is important because it can create a positive or a negative impression to the other person a non verbal communication mm -hmm. can create a positive or a negative impression to the other person when a person crosses their arms and sits straight in front of a person seems to be very defensive I see a comment there. Just give me a minute while I check that. Okay, Charles, I see you have raised your hand. Please go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to talk about the non-verbal communication. Um, someone said that the non-verbal communication is the language that is understood by the deaf. So when you're using the non-verbal, the deaf part of the other person that is receiving the communication will be at work. Thank you. Charles, I'm very sorry. I could not get what you said because your voice was jarring. It was not very clear. How about now? Can you hear me? Yes, now it's better. I was talking about the non-verbal communication and I was saying that it is the language, the deaf, can understand so when you use the non-verbal communication the recipient of the information their deaf part will be put at use because each person has that deaf part which is understood by the non-verbal communication that's what i was trying to to say okay Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Charles, for saying that. Thank you. Yeah, we have just received the power back. Thank you. Just give me a minute. I'll change the setting. okay thank you thank you the power is back okay so yes thanks charles for sharing it yes the non verbal communication is equally important as 
it can be in form of a message or signals that are non-verbal that's used in a platform such as as we discussed it can be an eye contact or a facial expression or gesture or the posture or the or body language it includes uh, various ways that we use in the uh, uh, social atmosphere or um, on any kind of physical environment where a voice and a, a language, a touch has been used. So it can also include the use of the time uh, and our eye contact and the action of looking while we talk and listen to a person and very frequent of glancing a person or the pattern of our speech, um, even the blink of an I, you know, all these things have been noted are very important in a non-verbal communication. We also see there's a study of non-verbal communication, which was started, yes, pretty long back around um, 1872 with the publication of the expression of the emotion in man and animals by Charles Darwin, where Darwin began to do a study on this non-verbal communication as he noticed the interactions between the animal such as lions, tiger, dogs. You know, he, he realized they also communicate with their gestures and expressions. And for the very first time, he said the non-verbal communication was studied and its relevance are been questioned. So today we see the scholars argue that nonverbal communication can convey more meaning than a verbal communication. And also some scholars state that most people trust the forms of nonverbal communication over a verbal communication. So we see Ray Birdswizzle concludes that non-verbal communication counts for about 60 to 70 percent of human communication. So whereas the other researchers say that the communication type is not quantifiable or does not reflect the modern human communication especially when it comes to people rely so much on the written means. Just as how a speech contains non-verbal elements known as the para-language, including a voice quality or the rate of speech or the loudness of a voice and the speaking style, as well as prosodic features such as the rhythm or the intonation and stress. So the written text have non-verbal elements involved in it, such as when it comes to a writing style or uh, the arrangement of words or the physical layout in a page. However, the study of non-verbal communication is focused on interactions between the two individuals. As I said, it can be between a mother and a child, or it can be between an employee and an employer, or between two people who are in relationship. You see, their verbal or the nonverbal communication is pretty different. By the whole setup, we know what relationship is that they have or what conversation do they have between them. So the non-verbal communication involves the conscious and unconscious process of encoding and decoding of words. So encoding is defined as our ability to express our emotions in, in a way that can be accurately interpreted by the receiver or the decoding which is called the non-verbal sensitivity, can have the ability to take this and encode the emotions that is involved and interpret its meaning correctly. So uh, encoding the very act of this information 
can be involved in such as the facial expressions or the gestures or the postures that is involved in it. So both of these skills can vary from person to person. When some people being better than the others on both communication on on uh, effectively or the verbal or non-verbal. So these individuals would be more socially conscious and have better interpersonal relationship. So there are some non-verbal communication that we need to make sure that we have it right in our daily setup. So I will just share some of the non-verbal communication that we need to be conscious of. <clears throat> just give me a minute while I've listed them. I'll just share a few non-verbal communication that is important. So when it comes to non-verbal, we need to be consciously take care of certain skills that we are not expressing that in our communication. So if we are in a meeting, in an employee setup, or it can be in a ministry, it can be in a conference setup, we need to be consciously taking care of our body language. What communication are we sending it out? Or what communication are we expressing in a non-verbal form? So it is very important for us to take care of our body language. How? So when we are, we are sitting in a conference or in a meeting or when we are addressing another person, we need to sit with a back straight against the chair or lean slightly forward to have a <laughs> I'm just having two of them here as I say they're just correcting their sitting posture <laughs> okay that's good and I'm sure even others as we are sitting we're just watching our own position how are we sitting and keeping ourselves engaged in the class so this posture is very important what message am I conveying even as I sit to teach I make sure that I sit straight and not leaning on my back and casually um, just speaking to each one of you know the very posture that we sit conveys how interact to our we in our communication a body language matters it shows that the message that i'm going to share is very important and it is very interesting at the same time it is very important so our body language is involved and we need to see to it that when we are communicating something very serious and it is important we don't give a smile out or a laughter in between a serious conversation. So it can be involved for both the speaker or the person who's listening on the opposite side. We're going to maintain a posture of paying attention, listening, by not simply smiling or laughing when it is not needed or when a serious message has been delivered. And also, we see to it that we display some animation with our hands and our facial expression to project that we are interestedly, interestingly or intentively we are listening. And we avoid uh, uh, talking with our hands or you know fiddling with our hands or legs, which are very unprofessional. We are not going to unnecessarily sway our hands or turn left and right or lean on a desk. We are not going to do that when it comes to a communication, okay, on a professional setup. So we, when it comes to a conference or any kind of professional setup, we avoid taking a phone up. 
it's not that you don't have to carry your phone but then you can always keep your phone on a silent mode or when we know that we are not going to use a phone in between a conversation you can always leave your phone aside inside your bag and also avoid taking a drink it can be a coffee tea juice to a conference or anything else that could distract the person either in an interview or in a meeting in a conference setup we avoid doing that Eliminate fidgeting of shaking of limbs, unnecessary of shaking of legs or hands. We stop doing that. Establish frequent but not continuous of piercing eyes contact with the interviewer. Focus on the conversation, what we are talking. In a group, Shift your contact, the eye contact, towards everyone. It should be equally. You are you're maintaining the eye contact with everyone when you're addressing a group. And do not fix your eye contact to one place and look at one side. We are just going to look at everyone in a class, in a meeting, in a conference hall when you address everyone. <clears throat> Sorry. You need to introduce yourself. When you introduce yourself, you're going to gently smile and have a firm handshake if it is one on one. Be sure that when you have a handshake with one on one, be sure that your palm is dry and clean. Keep your hands away from your face and hair when you're addressing a crowd or one-on-one -on -one person. Listen carefully, intently when the other person is sharing without any interruption. And listen until if it is needed. Maintain open arms. So when you address in a meeting or in a conference or one unknown person keep and keep your arms open don't have to fold and have that stiffness that's very defensive we can be a defensive message so keep an open arms when you are addressing or if you're listening to somebody on a one-on-one -on -one, keep your hands open on your leg or on the table let your hand rest openly modulate your vocal tone where we can express our excitement or punctuate key points like whenever it is needed you will have a vocal tone just to make the other person understand that yes you're listening it can be a different way either it can be a nod of head or a tone yes i understand uh, you know some kind of verbal sound or uh, just a nod, a non-verbal nod, will also uh, help the other person understand that you are intently listening to that person or you're trying to understand that person. We demonstrate that with a nod or a, uh, just a shake will help that person. Uh, we are in uh, non-verbally communicating to that person that, yes, I understand or I'm listening to you. and observe the reaction of others to your statement when you are explaining when you are sharing you also look at the other person's facial expression the body language through which you you can understand is that person listening to you or is he able to understand or you know it can be the various emotions can be expressed by the body language yeah, and we also see, read the non-verbal signals of others where if that person is confused with our words or disinterest or is it disinteresting that person or is he of, uh, you know, uh, we need to avoid our eye on the clock looking at the time often. So all these shows that you're not 
interested in what the other person is saying or you need to rush to another place these are the different mode of non-verbal communication the other person conveys to us so we need to watch on all this and check with that person is he able to understand or does it make sense or is there any way that you could help him or is there an emergency that he needs to rush or does he have time you need to ask and get it clarified so that you know where you are heading refrain we need to refrain from forcing another person to sit and listen to us when it comes to one-on-one -on -one conversation so you need to be mindful of what is happening yeah <laughs> sorry respect the amount of personal space preferred by your communication partner so and we should also yeah when it comes to one-on-one -on -one conversation it is very important to greet a person with a firm handshake we don't have to be excessively forced and holding up but it should be gentle but at the same time it should be a firm handshake when you greet a person and also at the end of the conversation show that you're interested in what the uh, interviewer or the ministry person whomever you are meeting that the person is saying or reinforcing with the statement uh, just to showcase or just to let the other person know that you are understanding what he or she is trying to say smile if needed have a pleasant body language to show that the person you're comfortable in listening to that person stay calm even if you're nervous it can be in any place it can be even in a ministry setup if you're uh, addressing a larger crowd and you know you have a starting trouble or you are nervous looking at the crowd whatever may be your emotional state of mind but we're not going to speak out or show that we're going to have a calm posture we're going to take control of that environment how it's only by practice by you doing it taking a deep breath knowing what you're going to say what you're going to communicate will help you do that it's all about practice that's what john maxwell says that in his leadership skills he gained the ability to share confidently communicate clearly is only by practice that's what he says to many of his leaders that before he comes to the stage he practices more than 200 times to gain that confidence to look into people's eye and speak to them so what makes him perfect is the practice and this confidence anyone can gain anyone you and i can gain this confidence by just practicing again and again and again the clear communication can be developed the non-verbal communication also can be developed by practicing yeah so these are some of the non-verbal communication that we need to look into uh, which is very important and very important it can be any setup workplace personal ministry which is very important is communication verbal and non-verbal is very important in our in our ministry or in our personal life or in the workplace yes with that we can end the session for this week and we will continue on the listening skills and the other skill sets next week with that we can end the session but i keep it open for a class if there's anyone in the class who would like to share more on the verbal and the non-verbal communication that can help us develop the skill put to the class you all can unmute and share your views i see 
Charles put a comment here. Action speaks louder than words. Yes, it is one of our non-verbal communication. And I also see Susan put up verbal communication. Yes, it builds our relationships. And we have Max and share, share. OK, a video clip demonstrate what you're teaching. It's very important. I want to learn more. OK, sure, Max and we will get that next class. Can we take water, Shri Kumar? Yes. Certain conferences, they would keep water. We can always carry water. OK, when I said a drink, it can be a coffee, tea, juice, which is not commonly carried by everyone. So personally, when an individual carries, it may disturb the speaker or in the group. But if it is served in the conference, if a coffee, tea, and a cool drink is served in the conference, then that's OK to have it. But personally carrying it something, for example, if it is in a classroom setup, if a person carries a drink and a snack, and in between the class, if he munches and has a drink, it may disturb the teacher, the other students who are in a class or in a conference setup. It may disturb the other person. But otherwise, yes, water is allowed. Anyone? the class if you would like to share okay <laughs> okay with that we can end the session with a word of break and i request charles if you can re and close the session If not, Charles, is there anyone in the class? You all can pray and close the session with a word of prayer. Pastor can I pray? Yes, please. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, precious Father, we thank you and praise you for this wonderful day which you have given to us. Father, we pray that, Father God, everything what we learn to you, Father God, let be able to practice it, Father God. As the Bible says, Father God, that you should not be the listener of the word, but the, but the doer of the word. Father, we know that, Father God, that these things is very important for us to build our communication, build our relationship in the ministry. So, Father, we pray that, Father, let this word of wisdom, O oh, Father God, greatly, deeply rooted in us so that we can be more productive and more we can be more wiser, Lord Master, in everything what we do. We thank you, Father God, for using your servant. We thank you for all the, all the students who, Lord Master, heard from you, we thank you and praise you, Father God, that Father God, for leading us and guiding us and Lord Master, strengthening our faith and strengthening our, sharpening our skills, sharpening our lifestyle, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. God bless. See you all in the next class. Thank you. Thank you.